I'm going to keep comparing these two quarterbacks and Russell Wilson and, and, and Marcus Mariota. You know, Marcus, I mean, Russell Wilson comes out of Wisconsin, the sort of pro style offense. And basically, you know, he's a five ten guy, but he, but he plays quarterback like, like, you know, the six, four, you know, gunslinger, which he's not, but you know, he has the mental capacity for it. And when I say that Marcus Mariota is one of the top prospects in the draft, in the draft, this is no quarterback class like we've had over the past couple of years. Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston are not starters in the NFL right away. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, they are, I think they're worth the talent. And, you know, I think unfortunately both of them might get shoved into a starting position, I would hate to see it because I think Marcus Mariota needs at least a year or two behind a back behind a starting quarterback to learn to become that that progression reading quarterback which you know there's no denying he has an unbelievable amount of talent but if he can you know if he can combine that knowledge that he got from the Oregon offense and then combine it with a pro style offense in the NFL I mean there's no denying that he has the absolute talent to be to be a pro bowler in this league and uh, you know I, I just you know, while I love both these two quarterbacks, and I think they will go early, maybe one and two. You know, um, you know, I think there's there's a lot to be a lot of work to be done on both of them. But I think you're right. I mean, the Oregon offense has affected him, and um, you know, that's that's his one major flaw because talent is not is not one of them. See, I agree. Uh, and every, all the reports you hear about Marcus Mariota, you know, he's a great kid. He's a smart kid. He's a hard worker. You know, his intangibles off the field are great. Blah blah blah. He's never been in trouble. He's probably, you know, never had a drink of alcohol, any of that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's the simple fact is that these spread offense QBs struggle because, like I said, they can't read a playbook. They can't make extra reads. And you're right, the talent is there for Marcus Mariota. We're not, we're never going to question the kid's physical talent. But it's simply, is he tough-skinned enough to, you know, kind of put in the work that he's going to have to do to change offenses, change, you know, almost style of play to a certain point to make sure that he can be a successful NFL starter. And is and when I say tough skinned, I mean, can he handle constant criticism, not just from the outside media, but from people in his own locker room? He's not dealing with, you know, as a junior now, a redshirt junior. <clears throat> he's not just dealing with, you know, 18 to 19 year olds, you know, 22, 23 year olds. He's dealing with guys who are 30, 35 linemen who have been in the league forever, and he has to come in as a young quarterback, as a quiet personality, because you know Mariota doesn't have the same personality as Jameis Winston. He is a much more quiet soul. He is he is quietly respected. He lets his play on the field do the talking, which is all well and good, but in the NFL you see that fail because you don't earn the respect of those 30, 30 35 year old linemen, those Pro Bowlers who've been around forever like they do, you know, the 18, 19-year-old fresh recruits who come into the Oregon offense and plug and play. And I, I worry not just about Marcus Mariota's ability to absorb an offense, as intelligent as a kid as I'm sure he is, I worry about his ability to absorb an offense and to command a huddle and to command a sideline because I've seen from my own perspective as a Cincinnati kid, seen Andy Dalton, who has won 40-plus games over four years and four straight playoff experiences, or four straight, four straight playoff appearances, but still every time I see Andy Dalton, you know, struggling or, you know, just on the sideline, he doesn't look like he's in full command of his offense where Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, all these guys who we can, Russell Wilson, all these guys who we consider top flight QBs have full command of their team in that huddle. And a guy like Russell Wilson, who's only, you know, two, three years into the league, without a doubt, has the full respect and full attention of that huddle and had it from his rookie year. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Mariota, I think he is tough-skinned, man. I think, you know, I th one thing I'm not worried about him is his leadership ability. And, you know, I, you know, I watched him stand on that podium and I watched, uh, you know, true emotion come out of that kid's, uh, you know, speech. And, and I think uh, he's very humbled by, by the player that he is. And, and, and he, I think he knows what's ahead of him. And I think he knows uh, what, what would be expected of him. And I think, you know, um, I think he, he, he's the perfect prospect to come in and be behind someone for a couple of years and, and you know, but uh, you know, I, I you know I've I really do like this kid. I think he's the guy that should go first overall um, as of right now. Um, you know, I want to see I want to see these guys in their interviews and the combine. And obviously, I mean, that's going to be probably one of our biggest debates is Jameis or Mariota. Uh, you know, over the next couple of months here. So, um, but I, you know, the the national championship game was too bad, and I think it, it it's going to affect his stock a little bit. I don't know if it's necessarily hurting it, but I think it's just going to put it in question. 
Well, Herbie, you're certainly right that we are going to be debating Jameis and Mariota for the remainder of the offseason up until May's NFL draft. But that's all we have for this conversation. We're going to keep doing a lot more offseason posts now as we get into NFL draft season. So keep it right here and keep watching the Roll Tide draft blog.